All right, Joel, so for the first time in eight years, it wasn't just a coronation of one guy. It was a competition, and we ended up with two champions, if you will, at the end of the year, Xander Shoffley and Justin Thomas, one winning the uh, Tour Championship, one winning the FedEx Cup. Yeah, start with Xander winning the Tour Championship. He had an incredible season, um, won the Greenbrier back in July, um, contended in a variety of other tournaments, especially turned up the heat lately, actually finished T5th at the U.S. Open. Um, and had a couple other top 20s. So it was certainly playing some good golf. Not going to say I, I expected him to win the Tour Championship, but I wasn't surprised to see him playing well. He's got an absolutely beautiful golf swing. He's a, he's a small guy, but he's got a really powerful swing, kind of like Justin Thomas, <laughs> who definitely has an even more powerful swing, a little more whip to his swing than, than Xander. But Xander's a guy who's not going to be a flash in the pan. I mean, he won twice this year. Um, look out for him in, in years to come. So big things for him coming down the way. But, yeah, Justin Thomas um, finished second the Tour Championship, but it was good enough to seal the deal for him to win the FedEx Cup. Um, if Jordan Spieth could have made any putts, which I'm guessing we'll talk about <laughs> yes, here in a we second, will. Yes. Justin um, would, would not. I mean, Justin played extremely well, finished second, but that would not have got the deal done if Spieth could have played a little bit better. Um, so Thomas... Thomas played great. He had a great season. He had five wins, but he didn't, you know, it, he, he definitely left Spieth uh, a chance mm-hmm. coming down the stretch by not closing the deal uh, into our championship. But it's funny, you, you know, you're Justin Thomas now, and you're heading into the, the last holes there, and, and you're realizing in your mind at some point, if I can get second, yeah, I didn't win this week, but I guess I'll settle for that $10 million first prize for winning the FedEx Cup. Yeah, and afterwards he spoke to that. I mean, he's a competitor. He, the first thing he said was, you know, basically, as a competitor, as a golfer, I'm always looking to oh, win sure. tournaments. But he's, it's a, certainly a nice consolation prize. <laughs> paraphrasing, but it's like, yeah, not bad. You we know? should all be so lucky. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Eight uh, digits in your bank account for finishing second place. Yeah, let's go back and talk about Shoffley again for a second, because I think we need to make sure we underline and, and emphasize this was his rookie season, and he's the first rookie to win the Tour Championship since Keegan Bradley did it back in 2011. Yeah, uh, the guy's 23 years old, uh, comes from California. He had a really good amateur career. He won the California State High School Championship, which, wow, put that up against any other state high school championship in the country. I mean, that's that's the best one out there. So he certainly he certainly had had some big, um, you know, some big wins under his belt before even turning pro. He played for SDSU, the other SDSU, (laughs) San Diego State (laughs) University, and was was really good there as well. so it's not it's no surprise to see him having success, but at age twenty three to have it that quickly and to win twice, you know, contending in majors, you know, winning um, you know, tournament the tour championship during the FedEx Cup playoffs is, is extremely impressive. So with a golf swing like he has and with the confidence he now has from winning these two tournaments, certainly expect him to to make some noise. So let's talk about Jordan Spieth. I mean, this is a guy that looked like he was in contention. He eagled ten and then had an ice-cold putter down the stretch. In fact, one website I was looking at called it a career-worst putting performance for Jordan Smith. Yeah, those, Is that going a little far? Those, Well, those were actually Jordan's words shortly after the tournament. He, he got done, he said, possibly a career-worst. Wow. And, uh, you know, I've seen Jordan struggle at times with the putter. It's rare. I mean, he, he's Jordan Spieth today because of his putter, yeah. uh, because of how incredibly hot he can get with that thing time and time again, especially when he's been struggling like at the British Open this year where he just pulled that unbelievable six-under stretch um, kind of out, out of his back pocket to end up winning, um, you know, winning the Open. But um, I, I, I would say it would rank up there. I'd have to think back through the last couple seasons with him, but he, he was unbelievably bad in the greens. In the front nine, he made an early birdie, then he got the whole six, a par five. He hit it over the green in two. He chipped it to about three feet, and I remember – remember him standing over that and thinking to myself, well, if he makes this, he's two under through the day through six, and, you know, that's a good start. He can make a few birdies around the turn and, you know, maybe give the back nine a run and then take home the FedEx Cup. He barely even hit the hole from three feet. <laughs> uh, he started walking, I, I think, almost before he made contact. Wow. Like, it was, you could just tell he just felt so uncomfortable. And down the stretch, he, he had a couple par putts that he missed. Um, he did make a really big par putt on, on 16, but right before that he had missed a short one. So he, you could tell he was struggling on the greens. And amazingly, I'm saying all this, he still shot 67 mm-hmm. on Sunday. It's not, it's not like he shot three yeah. over. He shot, he shot three under at a difficult course, but 
he was struggling. Uh, his wedge game was dialed in, but uh, his, his driver, as usual, was was off off the mark, and he was really, really not feeling it with the putter. So when it comes to player of the year, I know the tendency is to vote for the hottest guy right now. So you're looking at Shopley, you're looking at Justin Thomas, and thinking that they're going to get a ton of votes, and, and rightfully so, based on the golf they played down the stretch. But is it should it be more representative of a body of work? And then you talk about a Dustin Johnson, you talk about a Jordan Spieth and some of these other guys. Who do you think is going to be the player of the year? Yeah, to me, it's definitely Justin Thomas. I mean, he, he has five wins. Uh, one of them a major. When you have the major along with multiple wins, mm-hmm. it's really hard unless somebody has a Tiger Woods like year from, you know, in the mid, early, or even late 2000s. It's really hard to not give it to that player. So you have Thomas who won the CIMB last fall. He actually defended his title because he won it the year before. Then he won both of the Hawaii tournaments, um, tournament of champions, then won the Sony Open where he shot that 59. Um, and then he won, of course, the PGA Championship. He had a little bit of a, a lull in there because that, that goes all the way from January to August, but he won the PGA Championship, won the Dell Technologies Championship in Boston for his fifth title, and then he finished second at the Tour Championship and then won the FedEx Cup. So five Tour titles, one of them being a major. Spieth had a great year, too. I mean, he won the British Open, won the Travelers, won at Pebble, and then had a couple of seconds back-to-back to start the FedEx Cup playoffs and sputtered just a little bit, finishing, I think, both back uh, T seventh finishes, but three titles, one major versus five titles, mm-hmm. one major. You got to give it to Thomas. It, and it, I have to say this: it's kind of crazy, like in retrospect, to think this. But if Spieth, the moment of the year to me is Spieth on hole thirteen at the British Open, he's trying to figure out what the heck to do from yes. the driving range and make that ridiculous par um, bogey. Excuse me. But if if Spieth doesn't get crazy hot down the stretch there at the British Open and does not win. Uh, does not shoot six under in that five hole stretch. If if he does not do that, it's really kind of an interesting hypothetical because other than that that small stretch, you know, he was struggling on Sunday, and mm-hmm. if he doesn't win the British Open, his whole year looks completely different. Um, but sure. he did it, of course, and he won the major. And you know, it's, but regardless, from a player of the year standpoint, five wins. One being a major, Justin Thomas is the guy for me. So while the PGA wrapping up their tour championship with the Web.com tour has their finals going on, and we saw another instance where golf's rules continue to confuse even the players, and in this case, Matthew Southgate, putts a ball, it hits a leaf, and then the fun begins. Because, because he didn't understand the rules, he continued to play the putt, and then not only is he saddled with the bad luck of having a putt hit a leaf, now he's saddled with all this other collateral damage because he didn't understand the rule. What should he have done at that point when his ball hit the leaf, Joel? Yeah, so the leaf, this is one of those golf rules where you just have to collectively roll your eyes yeah. with the rest of the, the golf or even the sporting world at this point. But So uh, if a ball in motion is deflected by what what USGA terms an outside agency, which in this case would be a leaf, or it could be like a, a stick or mm-hmm. a tumbleweed or mm-hmm. something to yeah. blow across. Something that the was green. not there before, but is all of a sudden there yes. once you hit the shot. Yeah. Yes. If that happens on the green while you've putted it between the second you putted it, or I guess chipped it if you chipped it from the green, and it's going towards the hole and it gets deflected, you basically get a mulligan for free. Okay. You have to actually replay it. Um, you have to. It's not an option. Fair, You're not, it's not a provisional here. Yeah. It's, it, it's a requirement. Exactly. Okay. It's a fair rule in that regard, but it gets it gets gray because if you if you don't take the mulligan that they're essentially giving you, yeah. then you get not only in a tournament, not only uh, a two stroke penalty for not following the rule, you get another two stroke <laughs> penalty for signing an incorrect scorecard, which is the same <laughs> crap that happened to Lexi Thompson sure. back in April. Yes. So it's a, it's like, hey, you had a bad break, and we're going to give you a four-shot Let's penalty make it worse. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy, Matthew Southgate, poor dude, was already playing really poorly oh. and, and was not even going to get anywhere close getting his PGA Tour card. So this is just uh, to make matters that much worse. By the way, you get to you know do a little plus four on top of the score for that hole there. <laughs> but if, if nothing else, at least we've talked about Matthew Southgate now, and who knows when we may... Yeah. No. I guess. Um, I guess another maybe. interesting story, um, Steve Williams not going to be caddying. He was only caddying part-time for Adam Scott. Adam Scott was yep. kind of rotating caddies, if you will. And so uh, Steve Williams is going to do something he hasn't done before, which is go to the LPGA Tour to caddy for Danielle Kang. 
Does this mean that maybe we can stop talking about Steve Williams after this? Wouldn't that be nice? I mean, he already got his book out, yeah. so it's like, well, he can't come out with the, hey, I used to be Tiger's caddy, so I'm important for, you know, like 10 minutes of fame. Yeah. Of course, he's had a little more than 10 minutes of fame because he was, you know, next to the greatest yeah, player maybe of all years. time yeah. for a very long time. Yeah. But, yes, it certainly would be nice because of all the ridiculous things Stevie has said and the things and the breakup that happened between him and Tiger. And then when Adam won uh, at Firestone that following August, TV saying this is the greatest victory of my career and it's like you're, you're the caddy i mean i know you're important but like adam won actually just so you know uh-huh. but uh yeah that would sure be nice if if he could kind of just go away quietly into new zealand and race cars or whatever he uh he likes to do in his own time well close by to new zealand is australia and as we get ready for this year's president's cup event in jersey city new jersey we're already looking ahead to 2019 back to royal melbourne in two years for the third time for the president's cup but because, of course, their seasons are inverted with our seasons here. The tournament will be played in December when it's down in Australia in 2019. Yeah, it's, it, it's not without a little bit of precedence. They've done this before for some of the international competitions where they'll have them in November or October. But to have it in December is interesting because you have, uh, and actually that's 2019 when the new PGA Tour schedule will be launching. Mm-hmm. So you'll have the PGA moving from August, whoop, up to May, and then you'll have the Players' Championship going from May to March, so you'll finish the major season with the British Open in July. You'll have the FedEx Cup playoffs um, in, uh, finish up in, in August slash early September. And then a big then you'll lag. Have a significant <laughs> gap. Yeah, a significant <laughs> gap. You'll have the start of the next season, but a lot of the big names won't even be playing then. Yeah. And then you go with, with these guys, who many of whom, I, I, you'd hope that they'll ramp up their competitive schedules ahead of time, but they'll go like three and a half or four months mm. without a big tournament leading up to an international competition like the President's Cup. And no, it's not the Ryder Cup, but these guys still love team competitions yeah. and match play, and they play for their country. They play hard. It's very interesting that in December, like during the holidays, it's, it'll be early in December, but regardless, like it's after Thanksgiving. Post Thanksgiving, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's close, it's close to you know, Christmas. It'll yeah. be really interesting to see, first of all, I'm not going to rule out that there won't be one big name that will just say, you know what, I'm going to pass, mm-hmm. which has happened before. I'll, I'll call that right now. I wouldn't be surprised yeah. to see at least one of them just, just bag it just due to the bizarre middle-of-the-calendar date where guys like to take some time off for a change. All right, so one more President's Cup played in a normal setting, and that'll be coming up this week, teeing off Thursday in Jersey City, New Jersey, at Liberty National. The U.S., let's face it, Joel, the U.S. has dominated this competition. There's been 11 of these previously, and the U.S. is 9-1-1 one, and one overall. And it looks like everything I'm reading says the U.S. should dominate again this year. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the competition is so tilted. There was <laughs> The tie is a joke. It, kind of speaks, <laughs> it goes way back to 2003, but I still find that hilarious that there was a tie in a major well, international competition like this. But, yeah. I mean, the U.S. team, it's just not even, it's really not even fair. I mean, you have, you have Spieth, DJ, Justin Thomas, uh, Ricky, Patrick Reed, who P- Patrick Reed is arguably the scariest player, maybe other than Jordan Spieth, uh, on the entire roster because the guy has an incredible, had played that great Ryder Cup at, at Hazeltine last fall. I mean, he, he can ra- raise his game to the occasion anywhere. So, And then you have, uh, guys who have heated up lately, Brooks Kepka had a fantastic season, won the U.S. Open. Kevin Kisner, who's been really hot lately, contended uh, at the PGA and also at the Tour Championship. Um, Phil Mickelson, a captain's pick, you know, be a great locker room guy. And also Phil's played some, at least some okay golf down the stretch of the season. Charlie Hoffman, who had a really good late summer run. It's a really good team. Now, the, the international team has a good roster as well, most certainly, but a lot of them have struggled. Adam Scott has not even been playing lately. Jason Day's had a little resurgence lately, but still not totally sold that his game is back. Hideki has really struggled with the putter down the stretch. You do have a few guys that are they're hot lately, like Mark Leishman won um, last or two weeks ago in the FedEx Cup playoffs, and a, and a couple others who have made some noise a little bit this season, but. Emiliano Grillo, Adam Hadwin, Anubarn Lahiri, Si Woo Kim, I'm sorry, they just don't scare me in, in match play. 